my brother and I had different um, fathers. Yeah. And I remember, and I still remember this when I was five years old, my mom came to me, she said, look, this year I don't have enough money for toys, so I'm just going to have some food, things like that. Christmas Eve, my brother's father came over with gifts for him. And I can remember at five years old, yeah. He didn't get nothing for me. So oh, I'm sorry, Lonnie. Wow. I'm wow. Sorry. That is wrong. Still, and, and that, see, oh that affects gosh. her to this day. That is wrong. I think sorry. that that's... That, oh, Lonnie. And that I can remember her as asking him, I said, where's mine? Yeah. And he gave me some T-shirts. Because oh, he didn't forget about me. So do not forget about... If you have blended families, do not forget about all the children. Yes. Or don't give them anything. This is the delusion of women. It's like, this is why I can honestly say I don't think women do self-reflection. As an adult, she, she didn't reflect on that situation. She just bottled it in. She didn't actually think about it. And in this situation, right, she's not holding women accountable, her mom. She's not holding her mom accountable. Like holding her mom accountable for not having a stable family, but holding Another man account. This is why I said, right? Single mothers do not make a family, do not make a community. They make a broken family. It was not a blended family because that man that was the, the father of your brother wasn't your father. He wasn't even your stepfather from it, what, what it sounds. So here's the thing where here's the delusion and the selfishness, right? Even if she looked back on it, she could still, she's still selfish about it. Where she said, okay, if you're not going to give someone who, a child that's not yours a present, don't give your child a present as well. What? It's, she's, she's chastising a man for being there for his child. Does that even make sense? To, see, this is, this is the thing with women, right? You are putting down a man who's taking care of his child. You weren't his child. You weren't even his stepchild. So you should have hold your mom accountable for not even marrying that man. So he could have maybe have some kind of relationship with you, right? Some kind of more feeling or obligation towards you. No, she just had a child with another man. So the other man sounded like a good father where he focused on his child. He's not focusing on someone else's child. Just And, and all the women right there are cheering it on right this is why i said women are delusional because they help prop women's delusions and to be honest this is why i say women make bad, bad friends because they they support you no matter how deluded you are which is a detriment to you here's the woman right all the people around her supposed friends are supporting her in her delusions not making her self reflect correctly where you know what you should not require a man that has no blood relation to you no even no even any kind of relationship to you he wasn't your stepfather even okay no relations to you to take care of you to provide anything for you it was not his obligation he is obligated right and he should rightfully take care of his own child this is the thing where when i where women aren't helping other women right making them understand making them truly self-heal right truly self-reflect and understand your emotional baggage right your emotional pain if she was hanging on to that she her friends should have told you no this man was taking care of his child you weren't his child sadly your mom chose a man that you know couldn't take care of his own child and your mom couldn't take care of you as well right or she, they couldn't spoil you so really you should one hold your own father accountable to definitely hold your mom accountable for choosing men right that she couldn't be in a marriage with couldn't be in long-term commitment with this is the thing where women it's just delusional and all the other women just supporting is absolutely ridiculous when i first heard of section eight and public assistance it sounded like i hit the jackpot like i'm finally here I finally get to live a good life, rent free. I get to keep my money in my pocket because I get my rent paid. 
Little did I know that it would ruin my life. I got Section 8 after I had my first, second child. I got to choose how many bedrooms that I got. It was, it was so wonderful. At that time, I didn't know that my then boyfriend, who already had a felony, would not be able to live with me anymore. Us living together had to be a secret when it was time for um, inspection. I was hiding his shoes and hiding his clothes and hiding his belongings so that they wouldn't know that there was a man living with me, which caused tension. It caused, you know, some resentment, you know, and I'll talk about that later. But at that time, I didn't know how it was causing a separation between us. But we did it and make it seem look like, you know, he didn't live there. You know, and then it became one of those things that you don't live here. You can't even be on a lease. Not seeing how it would later on tear our family apart in many ways. Section 8 is a trap. Section 8 keep you with a mindset, this little poverty mindset. This is going to be a long one. Women are ridiculous. They lack accountability. How can you blame a program, the system, where it is meant for the poor? It is meant for the disadvantaged. It's meant for people who are struggling, i.e. single mothers or just really poor people. And then you blame it for your bad decisions while you're trying to take advantage of it. And it's insane that people think that getting on Section 8 is hitting the jackpot. It's absolutely insane. And it's insane that you don't even read up on the requirements, the what goes along with it. I, I, I think it's a cap that she didn't think that, okay, having a man live there is a no-go. Because two people, uh, two adult right, household, usually people would expect that, okay, how about both people are contributing to the money in the household. So they would assume that if there are two people, you should be doing decently well, that you don't require Section 8. Unbelievable, this woman is blaming a system meant to help certain type of people, but she's trying to take advantage of it, trying to, you know, circumvent the, the system. So who's that to blame? You for your, you know, shadiness. It's like really ridiculous. And let's let's dive in deeper. This type of woman, this is the thing, right? Where it's just sad. It is really sad. Okay? You are a mother of two. Now dating a felon who most likely seems like he's not working. Okay? And who who even knows if this, this man is the father of any of those kids? Who knows? Okay? I didn't, again, if you want to check her thing, you you could probably, it would be easier to find her. I'll try to uh, tag her down below. I try. I'll try. But this is the thing where women don't see that. You are continuously ignoring red flags. You are dating a felon. Dating a felon. A man that's not holding his own. Right? The man that's not really contributing. That doesn't have his own. And you thought that was a good thing. Let me date this man who's a criminal or ex-criminal who has nothing to his name. Let me provide a roof over his head for taxpayers' money. Section 8 is from taxpayers, okay? Let me abuse other people's money to provide for this man and my irresponsible decisions in life. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. And again, uh, everyone knows what Section 8 is for. And then you say it's poor man, people mindset. Uh, it's for the poor. What's the worst is throughout all of it, she doesn't recognize any of her faults. She doesn't see that she's the problem. She doesn't see that her mistakes are what's... She doesn't see that she's doing it to herself. It's just, I don't know. It's just it's ridiculous. I think I have just lost the one person that I've prayed for. All because of my self-sabotaging tendencies. God forbid 
I actually accept good things that are happening to me because I'm so used to it being a mess. I'm so used to it being toxic. And here I am in the face of a non-toxic situation, in the face of a God-fearing man, in the face of a, a family man, an amazing person. Here's like a controversial theory, right? I think dating for women is easy. You will always find a man that wants you, that wants to be with you, that wants a relationship and all this, all the stuff, right? I believe every majority of women, at least, have found a man that in their past, their, their dating history, right? Have a man that, um, a man or maybe a couple men, right? That would would have been what they essentially asked for, right? Would have been essentially um, the commitment minded as close to perfect as you can get, right? Uh, not No one's perfect, but I'm saying perfect and like this man wants to marry you. This man is faithful. He's commitment minded. He wants, he, he would be a good father. He, he would be, he would love you and treasure you. But I think a lot of women, right, with their state of mind is that they can't accept and like she said self-destructive right they can't accept certain men because these men are not perfect or not close to it not not truly close to it right where let's say his, his looks are lacking his finance is lacking or whatever name a character that's lacking name a trait that's lacking he doesn't have it so women will perceive that you know what i can get better there is better out there. So, although this man might not be a red flag or he doesn't have a whole lot of uh, traits or things that I dislike, I feel like I can get better. Uh, I feel like there's better out there for me. Uh, this man is not enough for me. So, essentially, they move on They or they, they, don't, they don't spend the time enough to really see every aspect of him because you know you, you already see a certain things that you don't like like maybe i don't know height or something shit like that right or like because he's not making enough for you so you, you you ignore other aspects because other there are certain aspects that are just a no for you which is whatever fine but then you down the road years later or whatever you think about why are there no men that that are commitment minded that wants to get married and that that would be faithful that um would be a good father i would say that there were you just didn't want them you just thought you could do better you just thought that this man isn't perfect enough or isn't good enough or didn't have these other qualities that you also want in a man. That's why that's why I think a lot of times women are self-destructive. 